Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst with Money and Markets, and joining me as he does each and every week from the historic vistas of Peru. And it's not really rural because I think you're in Lima, so I can't see Lima, rural, rural Peru. Um, although most of Peru is kind of rural as it is, but it is Charles Sizemore. He is Green's Unfortunate's co-editor, and uh, we are here for another episode of Investing with Charles. Uh, Charles, today's topic is is actually going to be a, a, a fairly timely one. I want to preface. Uh, all this by saying that we are recording uh, this video prior to the event we're going to be talking about, if that makes sense. So basically, the the big event this week, the big uh, the, the big mark potential market mover, uh, aside from uh, you know Russia Ukraine and 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 anything and supply chain issues and all that that we keep hearing about, uh, the FOMC, which is the Federal Open Market Committee uh, of the Federal Reserve, is scheduled to conclude its meetings, uh, and uh, we will hear from uh, Chairman uh, Jerome Powell. Uh, shortly after on Thursday, I believe, uh, to which it is widely expected that we will see a 25 basis point rise in the Fed fund rate. Basically, this means is that the Fed fund rate interest rate is going to go up. It has been hovering at around zero for uh, that since 2020, since basically, the pandemic. Since, yeah. since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and now we're going to probably see the first uh, of what could be between two and five rate hikes uh, estimated uh, just this year. Uh, as the Fed is trying to stem the tide of potential inflation. Um, and I guess what I want to do is, is Charles, uh, you, you've got a very extensive background in, in, in economics uh, and, and all that. So I, I want to kind of get your take on that. First off, I want to show uh, a chart here of the Federal uh, Reserve Fund Rate, which is what we're talking about here, and, and, and the interest rates uh, that, uh, the, the tracking of the interest rates that we've seen. And obviously, we see back in 1980, the Fed fund rate was 19%. I mean, this was, it was it was massive. And since then, we've seen a, a bit of a pairing back uh, more significantly into the mid 80s. Uh, into the, and then we saw a tick up uh, as we reached uh, 1990. Uh, and, and then the chart also shows kind of those periods uh, when we were in uh, a recession uh, based on uh, market conditions. So uh, there, there's a lot to digest here. And I guess let's let's get your take here first off on the potential for a Fed fund rate hike. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to circle back and talk about uh, how investors can kind of plan for that, uh, for that uh, almost inevitability. First, a couple observations. Uh, first being Peru is actually highly urbanized, not rural. It does have rural parts, but Lima is a metropolis of approximately 10 million people and a population of about 30 million all, uh, all together. You also have various other cities. So that's not really relevant to our conversation, but I did feel the need to uh, point that out. Just, just I, I, appreciate, I appreciate you <laughs> giving me the geography lessons of Peru. <laughs> more, more demography than geography, but I'm, I'm gonna correct you on that as well. Uh, also, uh, I just wanna point out that FOMC sounds like the name of a hip hop band from like the early 2000s or something. It's, uh, sounds like a K-pop get... group. Or, or that, kind of. <laughs> in, in, anyway, uh, now on, on to serious business. So the, um, the Ray Ike, the Fed's been telegraphing it for a while. And I, you can say this about Jerome Powell. I, I think it's highly likely, and it, by his own admission, he, he screwed up policy. He, he, has uh, recently, he actually came out in an interview and said, yeah, we should have started raising rates earlier. We should have tightened earlier. We were a bit behind the eight ball on that. And, and that, you know, this is, this is where we are today. But I, I will say this about Powell. He's not a man of surprises. He doesn't like to keep you guessing. I always, and this is almost like financial blasphemy, but I always hated Alan Greenspan because Alan Greenspan always spoke in this coded language that was so opaque and hard to understand that you would have three different people. You know, if, if you, me, and, and Adam were all watching Greenspan speak, and then as soon as he got done speaking, someone were to ask us, so what did Greenspan actually say? We would have three different answers because the guy spoke in such an opaque way that it was like, you know, the Oracle of Delphi type. Thing. I, I, I hated that. Like that was to me a, a terrible way to run things. Powell is very, uh, as I lose my group piece, excuse me, Powell is very straightforward. He tells you exactly what he's thinking. He tells you exactly what he's planning to do. He doesn't want any surprises. He wants, it's almost radical honesty here. He's just laying it out for you. And I actually do appreciate that. Now, the dynamic he's up against, of course, is that the Fed has a dual mandate. They are to uh, keep inflation under control but they are also supposed to guarantee a, a, a growth economy with full employment. 
these two competing interests are, are often uh, at odds. It's, it's worked out that, that at, as a general rule, we've been able to keep interest rates lower than most economists would have thought prudent for a long time without stoking inflation. When I say a long time, I mean 20 years. Uh, we seem to be kind of hitting the end of that road. Inflation is an issue for now. Now, one other point, you know, we mentioned that interest rates were you know, pushing 20% in the early 80s. That was the era of Paul Volcker. And Volcker in that kind of hypothetical good cop, bad cop deal, he was the bad cop. He was the, you know, Reagan basically, uh, actually, it might have been Carter. Well, Carter Reagan, you know, it's, he, 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 he was around, you know, that, that era, that transitional era between the Carter administration and Reagan administration. Reagan gave him the green light. You go ahead and you kill inflation. You do what you got to do. If it creates a recession, it creates a recession. This inflation thing's got to die. And so Volcker, uh, he, he hiked rates up to a, a, what would be considered almost a ridiculous level today, but it worked. I mean, it broke the inflation of, of the 70s, and we went through a long stretch of disinflation that really has persisted until very recently. So uh, you know, we're in a different world today. So Powell really does have some, some difficult choices. And what the, uh, the market's going to be very interested in seeing is not so much whether he raises rates, that's, that's baked in at this point. It's what is the forward guidance look like? How many rate hikes are we likely going to see this year? How quickly are they going to go? And right now, like I said, uh, at the top, you know, analysts are expecting between two and five, but that's a pretty wide, that's a big difference. And, and you know, there's a big difference between two rate hikes in a year and five rate hikes in a year. Um, and, and the other thing to point out here is, is to notice uh, if we go back to the chart of the federal fund rate, um, how the rates have changed in their rise. Um, if you look in the, the mid to late 1980s, uh, the the rise was pretty it was pretty significant fairly fairly quickly it happened again around 94 95 uh, then again right before 2000 uh, 2005 we saw a pretty strong rise up but then we get into the 2017 uh, rate hikes uh, and it was a much more gradual process um, I, I guess first off one what can we do we expect that we'll see kind of a more of a gradual rate hike as opposed to a more meteoric rate rate hike and two what do those two different hikes translate for uh, in terms of not only the consumer, but for an investor? Yeah, so a, a couple of thoughts on that. So why was the rate hike trajectory a lot, le a lot less steep the last go around right before the pandemic? It really goes back to 2008. 2008 was such a jarring experience for the capital markets and for the, for the Fed that they were scared. I mean, they were scared of their own shadow for 10 years after the, after the, the 2008 meltdown. They really had this reluctance to normalize policy because they were so afraid that the financial system just wasn't, you know, the banking system was just not ready for it. Now with the passing of time, hindsight here, that's ridiculous. They should have raised rates two years, you know, at, two years after 2008, they should have at least tiptoed towards raising rates a little bit, but then the European sovereign debt crisis happened. And then, you know, remember Grexit? Before there was Brexit, there was Grexit, right? Uh, people forget about Grexit, but because it never actually happened, but there was talk about it happening. But uh, anyway, I digress. And then there was, there was the, uh, the fear that Italy was going to default and, and everything else. So that was a very timid period for the Fed. The Fed said, look, we still don't see inflation. So we're, we're not, you know, we're just going to we're just going to keep it low like this as long as possible and, and, until something makes us makes us move. Now, we're sort of paying the price for that now. One of the reasons inflation is as high as it is, is we've just kept we've kept it policy accommodated too long. So so what does that mean? Um, it means we're, we're actually fighting some pretty significant headwinds for the foreseeable future here. Uh, we've run this year. We've had a scenario where stocks have been falling, but also bonds have been falling. Bond yields have been rising, which, which means prices have been falling. It's a hard environment to make money, Andy. When you know, your, your, your primary investment vehicle, stocks, is doing poorly, but then your hedge, your bonds, is also doing poorly. So you know, really what this means is that investors do not have an easy environment to head. Uh, it's not to say that you can't make money. I believe you can. It's just not going to be as easy as it was. 
And it's important to point out here as well that uh, Christine Lagarde, who is the head of the European Central Bank, she uh, 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 they had their equivalent of the FOMC meeting last week, uh, and and they've kind of echoed the same message that we've heard from Powell over the last several months in terms of uh, the, the trying to stave off inflation. Uh, the, I don't believe the ECB has actually made a policy uh, change in terms of its rate hike as of yet. Uh, the Bank of England also looking at additional 25 basis point rate hikes uh, as well. So we're seeing some of the largest uh, economies in the world that are trying to kind of be very linear and be very, you know, you know, together in their in their decision making uh, in terms yeah, of how we've to gone get away from coordinated from easing to coordinated tightening. And, and and so I guess the final question here is, is regardless of how many uh, rate hikes we'll see this year, we're going to see them. How many we don't know. There's no there's no clear indication from the FOMC as to as to how many they're going to have. We are probably going to see one this week. Um, what can investors do um, to, I guess, not necessarily guard against a rate hike, but maybe be more advantageous with a rate hike? There's a couple of things I would suggest. One, you, remember, you don't have to be fully invested all the time. There's no ironclad rule of the universe that says 100% of your portfolio has to be invested. You can keep some in cash and you probably should. I think rule number one here is just keep a little bit more cash on hand than usual. You don't have to be all in cash, just a little more than usual. If you normally keep whatever, 5% in cash, maybe keep 10, 15% in cash. If you usually keep 10, maybe keep 20. Um, just keep a little bit more in cash so that you have that ability to be tactical. And that brings me to, my, to number two is be tactical. You know, look for those kind of short-term mean reversion trades. If you see that stocks have fallen kind of too far too fast, you can make short-term bets that they bounce. It, it, you don't have you're not doesn't have to be a you know buy and hold forever pick. It can be just a you know a multi-day a multi-week pick. That's fine. Uh, you can also play the short side. So you know it, that's and then I guess the final point would be you can look outside of the traditional stock market. We've done really well in Green Zone Fortunes looking at commodity plays, for example. And I think that's a great place to be so long as we're in this high inflation and uh, a negative environment for stocks and bonds. I think it's no secret here that, I mean, we've seen uh, the 12 month basis of inflation at 7.9%. It's the highest it's been in, in recent memory. Um, that's, there's no quick way to reverse that. There, there's no, it doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight where we go from 7.9% on a 12 month basis down to you know 2% which is the fed target. Um, no, it, it, it ticks overnight. down over time. I have to, yeah, I, I've been saying for a while that I did think inflation would be transitory. Now the war in Russia, the war in Ukraine that that does um, stretch out my time frame a little bit, but all the same, you know, you don't go from 7 or 8% inflation back to the targeted 2% inflation in a day. It goes from 7 to 6 5 for it's, it's a countdown and, it, and it, it'll probably be like a salt tooth on the way down where, you know, it, it's kind of choppy on its way down, but it, that doesn't happen in a day. It happens over several months. And this, at this point, it may be a couple of years. And the key thing here, uh, the, the key takeaway here is that we are going to see a rate hike. Um, how many of those rate hikes we see, we don't know, uh, but we are going to see them. Uh, the key here is, as, as, as an investor uh, is to be tactical, is to you know, be smart when you're looking at, at, at things. Look at other things outside the market if you, if you so choose. Uh, maybe even increase your cash, cash position rather uh, in your portfolio. Uh, but do, you know, don't divest yourself of the market uh, and don't jump all in and bet the farm on the market. Uh, you you want to spread the wealth out a little bit, look at commodities, uh, look at other things outside of just traditional stocks. Uh, and ETFs uh, as, a, as a vehicle for your, uh, for your portfolio. So, uh, Charles, again, good stuff. Appreciate that. We we'll look forward to seeing what the Fed uh, has to say, uh, not just now, but in the months coming, because I, I don't think this is going to be the last time we're going to have this conversation about no. a Fed rate hike uh, this year, or at least even this quarter, maybe. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see uh, exactly what happens and more specifically how the market reacts to that. Uh, again, I agree with you. I think the market has kind of already priced this in because the Fed mentioned this in January. Uh, Powell said, we're going to see rate hikes. Uh, we're going to taper things off. We're going to taper our bond buying uh, in March. Uh, so, and now we're, the time is here. So we've had three months for the market to kind of price all this in. So I don't know that we're going to see big, massive market moves uh, based on whatever Powell comes out and says after the FOMC meeting. Uh, 
uh, it concludes this week. So um, he is Charles Sizemore. He is the co-editor of Green Zone Fortunes. Make sure you check out Green Zone Fortunes. We're going to put a link up top. Uh, top-notch analysis, uh, in, in-depth uh, looks at, at stocks, at the market, uh, as well as those stock picks that we believe are going to beat the market by at least three times uh, over the next 12 to 24 months. All that is in our Green Zone Fortunes service. So you can check that out. Like I said, the link right up top here. We will, we, we've uh, uh, got some new things coming out as well. So make sure you check that out. Moneymarkets.com is your home for safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. Charles, Adam, myself, and our entire team, we work tirelessly uh, all seven days of the week. We don't give Charles days off because he hasn't earned them yet uh, and we'll, to give you all that information. You can check out our proprietary green zone rating system. Just type in the ticker of any stock uh, you see in the top right corner of moneymarkets.com and you'll be able to see fundamental data, You'll be able to see our rankings based on fundamental and technical analysis, overall ratings. You can create your own watch list for free, and you can do all that at moneyandmarkets.com. Again, he's Charles Sizemore. I am research, uh, re, uh, research analyst Matt Clark. Until next time, everyone, safe trading.